Hello, I'm Naki and I form part of the Harvey Lab Group. I work alongside Kate and Simon Harvey and I'm based over at Discovery Park in Sandwich. My research focuses on developing a stem cell based assay for assessing the quality of human IVF so media. The aim of my PhD is to develop a cell based assay that can reduce or replace the use of the mouse embryo assay, which I'll speak about a little later. So the aim is to reduce the use of the mouse embryo assay in the research and development of IVF products. And the assay has to be cost-effective, reproducible, as well as optimized and easy to run. And media and equipment have to undergo quite stringent quality control measures before they can be used commercially in IVF labs. And this ensures that the products are designed and optimized to yield the best results. And it also allows scientists to identify any need for improvement. The mouse embryo assay, which I mentioned a little earlier, is used for quality control in IVF and it's considered to be the gold standard um, because mouse embryos develop in a way that's comparable to human embryos. So it's assumed that findings from the mouse embryo assay can be applied to research um, and the improvement of human IVF. There are, however, some concerns over the use of the mouse embryo assay. First of all, its quality can vary depending on the sensitivity of the assay, and this insensitivity isn't always detected. It hasn't been standardised, so there is likely to be variations between labs and operators. And depending on the design of the experiment, it can be very expensive to run, and large amounts of mice are sacrificed. Each product is tested with approximately 20 or 25 embryos, so you can imagine how many um, animals have to be sacrificed for this. It's also a complicated procedure that requires highly skilled personnel, and th this also incurs its own cost. A question I often get is, has a stem cell based assay already been developed? And the answer is yes. So the embryonic stem cell test was developed in 1997 and validated in 2011 and it studies the differentiation of mouse embryonic fibroblast in toxic conditions. It's a popular assay in the pharmaceutical industry for assessing the teratogenic effects of substances before they can be used commercially. So before a drug can be um, rolled out for public use, pharmaceutical companies often use the embryonic stem cell test to assess whether um, taking a particular drug may affect fetal development. It hasn't been adapted for use in the IVF industry though. It's predominantly used in the drug industry. So when tests like these have been applied for quality control purposes in IVF, the survival has been too high and therefore not indicative of how toxic an IVF substance is. Studies of this kind have previously used somatic cells, which are also known as adult cells. And this isn't really a suitable model for studying early embryonic development. So for the work I did, I used P19 embryonic carcinoma cells. These cells are immortalized and relatively easy to handle in culture conditions. Because they're immortalized, they can be used over and over again, and you don't have to worry about um, the material as long as they're maintained in healthy conditions. They're derived from the testes of male mice, so they exhibit properties that are closely related to cells in the blastocyst of mouse embryos, so they're ideal for studying embryonic development. Because they're pluripotent, they can also be induced to differentiate into all three germ layers by treatment with DMSO and retinoic acid. And they're also carcinoma cells, so they grow quickly to produce large amounts of material for research. So you don't have to wait for a very long time to get the material you need to conduct your experiments. Furthermore, in untreated culture conditions, the cells stick to one another and they form aggregates um, of 3D structures called embryo bodies. And interactions between these cells induce differentiation into derivatives of all three germ layers. And this models the behavior of early stage embryos Again, making this model um, a suitable model for studying developmental um, biology and early stage embryos. So as you can see here in this slide, the P19 cells start off as single cells 
and as they grow and attach to the dish that they're grown in they change morphology and they sort of stretch out a bit like spider webs um, and cling onto one another to form a mesh and in untreated conditions the cells stick to one another to form aggregates which i mentioned earlier called embryoid bodies and interactions between the cells within the embryoid bodies induce differentiation so you'll be able to see here that they sort of clump to one another to form spherical um, structures. So there you have it. My research has explored ways in which the P19 embryonic carcinoma cell line can be used as an alternative to the widely used mouse embryo assay. Thank you for listening.